my doctor said, look, you know, this is cancer. You know, it, it's going to be a long ride. It's going to be hard. It's going to be arduous. You know, you have to strap in. I said, well, it's messing with a marathoner. This is my jam. This is what I do. You know, the way I've, I've been putting it is, you know, I'm, I'm trying to outrun cancer. At some point, you know, it's eventually going to bow out and let me keep running. Cancer's picked the wrong person to mess with. I'm basically taking every day as a challenge from cancer, saying, look, cancer doesn't think I can outrun it. Well, I guess we'll see about that. One day, just long story short, when we got to the month of August, I was definitely at my worst place. But I always found some relief in our three-way text with Eric and Mark. We would talk about the stupidest things. And then out of nowhere, Mark asked me in, via this three-way text, hey Phil, what's the latest with your donor situation? And I thought that was just kind of weird because, you know, that's not what the purpose of this three-way text is. It's just about us being idiots. So, but I said, all right, no, I'll, I'll respond. And I just said, well, you know, quite honestly, I'm, I'm just still waiting. I understand that, you know, we're under final evaluation, but I'm not going to hear word until we, uh, until that donor has been confirmed. And then out of nowhere, Mark responded, well, that's funny because they told me that they wouldn't let me know that you were matched until they told you. And then I just responded, and you can bleep this out, I responded, what the f are you talking about? <laughs> and then Mark responded, I'm the donor bitch. <laughs> and initially I was laughing, but then it just, you know, it just hit me. It, it just hit me like a tsunami of what was happening, you know, you know, you know, right in front of my fingers. So I dropped the phone and I just started crying. When, when the call came through, when Phil told us what was going on, I didn't think anything about it. It's like, hey, this is what has to be done. Let's do it. I mean, there's really nothing. I didn't sit there and think about if I have a choice in this or not. I was like, no, it's just what's going to be done. Uh, I immediately called my mom just everybody burst in tears, telling my brother, telling my sister, telling my parents, telling my, you know, telling my in-laws. It was really just kind of like that slap in the face where you idiot, you are never in this alone. Everybody was in this with you. Okay, we, we've gotten through all the emotions of getting the news. Now, okay, let's get back to reality. Let's start talking about, you know, scheduling and what we have to do to get to that date. So we landed on the 9-11 date, but that literally only gave us like three weeks. And yeah, so again, it was just one of those things where everybody was ready to lean in and, you know, support us throughout this process. So, um, but still, I mean, three weeks is not a lot of time to, you know, to prepare for something like this. But what was great was that they actually set up Mark's bed right next to mine. And there was a curtain up between us, right? So they brought me in first. Um, and then about five minutes later, I, I hear Mark's voice. And they, they asked him these series of questions. Okay, why are you here today? And he says, oh, I'm here to save the life of my friend Phil Shin. <laughs> it was really nice to hear that because he wasn't saying I'm here to just donate a liver. He says, I'm here to save the life of you know, my friend Phil Shin. So then by then I said, I said, we need to take this curtain out of the way. He, we need to bring this in. And then Mark turned and he saw me and then we stood up. We just gave each other just another big massive hug. So it, it, was, it was really nice because I was able to you know, draw back the screen. We were able to spend that time together. I was grateful just to have him there and Sharon and, you know, Preeti just to uh, uh, relax me.
I was going to walk out of this with my second chance at life. And I really did feel that Mark was going to come out of this even better than he was coming in. So. Yeah, we're definitely better friends now. I would definitely call him a friend. And it is really cool knowing that, uh, yeah, a part of me is going to be running the Boston Marathon. I'll never get that opportunity, but kind of I am. LA in March of 2020 is going to be, it's going to be a very signature event for me. One, it's going to be my 10th LA Marathon. And to me, I running it cancer free. And then on top of that, after having a liver transplant, just six months uh, post transplant. So I, it's very, it's very hard for me to express what that marathon means to me. Um, it's still far and away my favorite marathon. Having the journey that I've been on um, over the past two years piled onto that, and then now building this community around me, uh, everybody who's been fully invested in me in getting through my journey to now run this, this basically represents kind of like a finish line for me. Right. I've always preached that, you know, the marathon itself, you know, it, it is, it's the celebration. The, um, the hard part of, you know, running the marathon is the journey to actually run the marathon. This is going to be more than a celebration, guys. This is going to be, I mean, this is just going to be the event of my life because, again, living with cancer, cancer offers you no guarantees. Cancer doesn't owe you anything, so it could easily have just taken this away from me and said, you know what, you're done with marriage. We're going to stop you at nine LA marathons and that's it for you. But this is just going to be one epic event that I don't know how I'm going to be able to get through, but we will get to Santa Monica, I guarantee you. I just don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get there because I'm going to high five every single person along the course. I'm going to stop at that chili dog stand in Echo Park, which I told them that you know, one of these days I'm going to stop and eat that chili dog. This time I will eat that chili dog. Um, and I've got so many other uh, marathoners that have offered to just run it with me. So I have a good friend of mine from Wisconsin who's going to fly out just to run it with me. I've got other friends that have their own time goals that they want to achieve. They say, you know, I'm putting those time goals aside just so that I could run the LA Marathon from start to finish with you. So it's just, I mean, I, I don't know how I'm going to um, react to all that. Uh, and quite honestly, I don't want to even think about it. I just kind of want to let the day come to me and then we'll see how it finishes. But I imagine it's going to finish with a lot of smiles and a lot of tears.